Welcome back. We're speaking on the issues of education and youth uh, today. We have with us the Minister of State in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, the Honorable Floyd uh, uh, Green. And you were saying at the break, Minister, I think you were going yeah, on. So, so at our primary schools, we, we normally give a subvention of $800 per child to deal with the general upkeep and maintenance of the schools. Um, nowhere near sufficient. Um, so we've looked back at our budget and, and we think now that we've dealt significantly with the issue of access to secondary, mm -hmm. we need to now help our primary schools. Okay. So we have moved that subvention in this year's budget from 850 to 2,500 per child, a significant increase. But yes. we have recognized that our primary schools are in tremendous need. You know, last year we raised the grant, but this year we're taking it a step further. And we're giving them a, a lot more latitude so that the issues that occur the maintenance challenges, just remedial issues in relation to infrastructure support, that the primary schools would have much more space, fiscal space, to do what needs to be done. Minister, what's been done in terms of early childhood education? Is the government placing a strong emphasis on secondary <coughs> and tertiary education at the expense of Oh, no, uh, uh, early absolutely that's not. not true. You know, absolutely not. And that's not true. I think we all, and it's something that we've studied. We all recognize that the most critical years, the first, uh, the first eight years, yes. fundamental. Mm -hmm. And you know for a long time we've had an early childhood commission and mm -hmm. they've set standards and they've done a good job of, of laying out the framework, going into schools, doing the inspections. Um, a lot of the schools know what they need to do to reach a certification level, but a lot of them haven't been able to do it. So what we have been doing is taking the concept of certification to the schools in a very real way. We spent last year strengthening the, the, the core support of the Early Childhood Commission. There are a lot of positions unfilled, developmental officers, inspectors, IT managers. We filled those core positions. Government did. Yes, yeah, so that, so that the, the institute itself is much stronger. You know, the Early Childhood Commission has now gone fully paperless. Their system is fully paper, so we're looking at the efficiency of the overarching structure, and now we're going into the institution. So we've done what we call certification fairs, taking the conversation to the schools. So you know, one of the difficulties is that the schools require police records, they require health food handlers permit. Um, some of the practitioners would say, boy, it was difficult coming into Kingston. So in the certification fairs, they can come to those fairs, sign up then and there. Because what we're on now is a drive for certification. When we took over, there were four schools that were certified. So Only four? Only four. So what would have happened is that a number of the schools, they reached the basic requirement. Mm -hmm. So they're registered, but they have not fulfilled all the requirements to be certified. What we're trying to move them now from having the basic requirements of registration to reach to the full requirement of certification. And in the past year, we've moved from four to 30 schools by taking the conversation. Now, one of the issues, clearly, is resources. We still have a mixed early childhood sector where we have infant departments, which are government, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of private-run mm -hmm. homes, run early childhood centers. So what we have been saying is that we need partnership. And we've reached out to our NGO community We've reached out to our private sector, and to be honest, a number of them have answered the call. You know, Digital Foundation has committed to pump 15 million to help five early childhood institutions become certified. So we call this the drive the partnership for certification. You have like, a national baking company. They're pumping 70 million to provide equipment in our early childhood institution so we can deal with that standard that treats with quality of education. And then the, the recent one, Restaurants of Jamaica, they're coming on board to deal with the breakfast program of over 35 institutions. Mm -hmm. So we're saying to more people, look in your community, look at the basic school that you went to. What we have done as government, we've gone in and we've done the report card, get the information, help them to reach certification. Okay. Children's services, um, Minister, what's, what's being yeah. done in that, in that critical well, you know, it, area? It, very critical, very exciting area, um, a very fulfilling area, but a very difficult area. Unfortunately, we, we have a high levels of, of, of abuse yes. of our children. You know, th at last check, we were at 13,000 yes, cases, two, reports, yes. for a year. That was 2015. That's over 1,000 in each year. One of the things that we took the year to do was to go around and, and, and speak to our partners. We have our private homeowners. We have our foster parents, over 800 people who've opened up their homes mm -hmm. for children. Our private homeowners, we have about 49 private homes, and then the others are government-run. And we listen to some of the critical concerns. Clearly, resources 
is always a concern, mm -hmm. but also some simple things. You know, one of the things they indicated that they were having significant difficulty when their children um, get ill and interacting with the public health system. So we sat, we met with Minister Tufton, and we're working out now a plan for our primary health facilities, our clinics, that if they can dedicate a day where our children of the state can go in and, and, be, tr and be treated with. But we've taken it a step further. So one of the things that we did is that in each parish, we have now an arrangement with a doctor where a, a child of the state, whether it be a foster child, whether it be a, children in, a child in their children's home, once they get ill, it's an emergency, they need a checkup, um, the resources are hard to come by, they can bring that child to that doctor. And that doctor will do it free of cost, well not free, but free to the parent, yes. free to the caregiver, and build the CDA. Mm -hmm. And I think that will go a far way in making it easier. Another big thing, the foster parents said they were having difficulty getting their children on their health insurance wow. because they were having some trouble saying it's not, although they're fostering the child, yes. it's not their biological child. Okay. And we're saying we must can help to fix that. So we met with insurance providers, and now I was happy to announce in Parliament that foster children will now be added to the health insurance policies of our foster parents. Another big one is that the NHF card will now become available for our children of the state. So now you know the NFS program, there's some medication that they can get that will now become available for children of the state. So we're very, very happy in relation to that. And we've been working on adoption because one of the things we're trying to do is when they come into our care, if we have people who are qualified, who can give them a home, who wants to give them a home, we have to find a way to place them there. And we think it's very, very important. And we were able to place last year 160 children out of our care into loving homes and families. Okay. And we, we did that, we were able to reduce the process by removing one of the aspects. It used to be a two-tiered process. We've removed the first tier, but still ensuring that we're doing the relevant checks to ensure that the children are being placed in homes that are suitable. Okay. Mr. we're running out of time, but we have yes. to touch youth policy, which is directly yes, yes. under your uh, portfolio. Yes. Yes. What's the advance well, there? Well, the youth policy has been in abeyance for some time. We think it's very, very critical to have an institutional framework. Um, I, I said to the young people last year, give me a year. Yes. Let's look at what you have said for the green paper. Let's update it. I'm very happy to announce that the youth policy has been updated. Mm -hmm. It went to our senior policy team. It's been approved, and now we're sending it off to cabinet. And we expect that by July, we'll be tabled the new youth policy and we think it's very 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 important so big move in relation to youth policy another youth issue yes. is that we've been really working on placing our young people in 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 jobs oh. work experience okay. one of the things that we find is that young people need the employability skills in terms of having gone into an actual work environment mm -hmm. so when we came in we found our summer work program at 5,000 placements we challenged the team and we were able to move to 6,000 mm -hmm. placements. And now we're targeting 8,000 and beyond for this year. Mm -hmm. And that's already programmed in the budget, right? But the, the other one I want to speak about is our graduate work experience program, because we're, we're, we're very happy about this program. What it does, it takes graduates from the university, gives them a six month internship. We placed last year, the year before we came in, 350. Mm -hmm. Last year, again, I challenged the team we're able to place 500. Oh. But importantly, of the 500 we place, 213 Retained. have secured Those permanent jobs. employment. Good. That's 42%. Now that is what we, we, we mean when we say we're elevating youth. Yes. And that was the theme of the presentation. Elevating How can we move our youth from one state of being yes. to another? We're taking them to a new level, and that's what we're doing. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Concrete achievements there um, uh, spoken by Minister of State in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, the Honorable Floyd Green. We thank you for your company on Issues and Answers next week. We'll be back. Until then, Ian Boyne wishing you a pleasant day. <laughs>